phrase because it occurs all, all through the Old Testament. In Psalm 121, it talks about how God watches over our comings and our goings. The book of Numbers talks about how God, uh, about this magnificent action for the people of Israel, where God would raise up a leader who would lead them like a shepherd in their comings and goings, and going in and going out. That phrase, uh, come in and go out, was about the full realization of God's blessings in our life. It was about unlocking the door of heaven and being doused in all the wonders of God that God has in store for us. Because Jesus does not simply want us to get by spiritually. He doesn't want us simply to eke out a spiritual life. Jesus did not come so that we could simply progress day by day without a sense of inner vitality or vibrancy. Jesus says, I have come so that you may have life and have it in the full and have it abundantly. Commenting on this passage, Charles Spurgeon says that how sad it is that many people in faith are content to simply exist instead of actually thriving. And yet the constant picture that we have in Scripture of our life with God is not about just getting by. It's not about just existing. It's a picture of abundance. God holds up rivers and lush lands and magnificent banquets. It's not a cup that has enough It's a cup that runneth over. That's the life that God wants us to have. And Jesus is the gate that leads to it. He has come so that we could have abundant life. And it means then that Jesus holds out an abundant life for us. There are experiences of God. There are testimonies of his presence. There are answers to prayer. There are expressions of his grace. There are manners in which God will rend the heavens and pour out blessings upon you if we would just come through him. It's the promise of scripture. If we would just listen and heed it. And yet all those things stand forever elusive if we fail to walk through the very means by which it is offered. St. Augustine says that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. There is no amount of spiritual steeping of the soul, or spiritual readings, or hidden uncoverings that will produce that soul-satisfying spirit-enriching and faith-fueling life that awaits us if we walk through the gate which God has provided in Jesus Christ. This passage is an invitation. The gate is swung wide for all who would enter. All who enter will find pasture. Again, pasture is what sheep want. It's what they look for. It's what they search out. Pasture is what they feel deep within as what they need most in their lives. And it keeps going and going and going. I have to tell you, I was thinking about this and uh, about that image of pasture and, you know, what could be an image today that would connect with us. And uh, instantly, my mind went back to when we were in London a, a week ago and we went to Hamley. Now, if you don't know Hamley's, Hamley's is like a million-story toy store. It's just, it's a huge, huge toy store. And we went in there with Solomon, and Solomon, in joy and expression and exhilaration, kept on saying, my Lord, there's another floor. Then we go up. There's another floor. Then we go up. There's another floor. Then we go up, and it was the pink floor, and we don't want the pink floor, but it's another floor. And we just go up and up and up and up. Even if, you know, everything is great in our lives, the abundant life of God is, my Lord, there's more. There's more that God wants us to give. 
There's more that God wants to give us. There's more blessing that God wants to shower upon us. There is more. What is it that brings life to your faith? What will provide energy to that which may have been complacent? Or a light which may be to something that has grown dim? Are you needing direction? Are you in a state of confusion? A state of questioning? Are you weighed down by a struggle or a burden or an anxiety or a worry or, or whatever it is? Or maybe it's none of these. Because I know that there's probably people here that say, you know, I've been sitting in the church for longer than you've been alive. And maybe everything is working out in your spiritual life exactly the way that you want it to be. You know what? There's more. Do you want a bit more? Do you want a deeper sense of his presence? Do you want a a bigger feast of his grace? Do you want to uncover that which he might have in store for you next? Then walk through the gate. Stay boldly from the deepest place that you can muster, that you accept Jesus as the way to that which you seek most. Of course, when we walk through him as the gate, we also encounter him as the Lord, as the good shepherd to whom we must follow. And when we uncover him as the shepherd, we also uncover him as the bread of life, the one that we're called to listen to and to feed upon. See, it's all about him. Steeping your soul, it's all about us. It's all about what we can muster, what we can dig up, what we can figure out. In the gospel, abundant life, it's all about him. And in the same way that pressing physical conditions drive us to a doctor or a problem with our car moves us to the mechanic, take whatever need or desire or worry or feeling or joy that you have within you spiritually and take it to Jesus. Because he has come for you to know life and know it in all its abundance.